You're watching s and Outdoors. Discover the world around you. Hi guys and welcome to another episode of s and Outdoors. My name's Mitch. Um, we're gonna be checking out how to make deer sausage today. So uh, this was a deer that, <coughs> excuse me, me and my son harvested uh, last deer season. So thought out some of the uh, grinds that we did. Um, we butchered it and grinded it and did everything ourselves. So um, this is some of what we've got to work with. And today we're gonna make, uh, they call them little Smokies or you could call them like Slim Jims or basically those little sausages like Slim Jims or whatever that you buy at the store. It's basically what we're gonna make, except they're gonna be the deer version. Now, what we're gonna do is for our spice, we're gonna be using uh, today the Bearded Butcher's uh, Chipotle seasoning. Um, I like them, give a shout out to them on their YouTube channel. They do a really good job of, of teaching how to break down deer. In fact, that's how, that was the video I watched to uh, break down uh, the deer was one of theirs. So they do a really good job. I do like their blends. This one is a Chipotle blend, which is a little bit hot but it's it's not bad like uh, kids kids are fine with it it's not like you know burning hot so don't be afraid of it but it is kind of kind of spicy uh, in a sense has that that's nice spice note to it so anyway for that today um, the meat ratios that I recommend for that, meat to fat, and uh, those of you that may not know how to, uh, if you're gonna grind your own deer meat or whatever is, you don't want the deer fat. You wanna take all the deer fat off of the meat to start with, um, and you wanna go to your local butcher shop and you wanna get pig fat, okay? You wanna get fat that's off of, you know, when they cut the belly fat off the pig or any other fat, you want that. And what we'll do is, this is an 80-20 blend, is what this is. So 80% deer and 20% uh, pig fat, okay? So the pig fat will give it a really good flavor as well as it will keep it moist and it won't dry out when uh, we're smoking it and cooking it, okay? So you want that 80-20 blend. I would show you me grinding it up, but uh, we, we kind of just processed it all in one day. So anyway, um, that's what I have here. I've got four pounds of it. So two pounds is in each bag here. And so therefore, the ratio that is recommended by the bearded butchers for doing this specific thing, with doing these little smoky sausages, is one ounce of the seasoning per every two pounds of meat, okay? So I've got two ounces, because I've got four pounds of meat, so two ounces of the uh, seasoning is what we'll end up seasoning it with and mixing it in. Also, you need to get some of these 17 millimeter collagen uh, tubes uh, for the actual sausage tube to put it in. So 17 millimeter is what I'm gonna be using today. So you'll wanna use some of these, okay? And then we've got over here, let me set this to the side for a split second. Over here we've got our sausage stuffer. This one uh, was just one that I picked up from Cabela's. Wasn't too awfully bad. In fact, it was the same price as an LEM one. This one does six pounds um, of sausage is what this does. Um, you can get it uh, from six pounds all the way up to, I think it was like, what, what was it, Trent? I don't remember, he, he's doing the camera. It was like, 10 or 15 pounds or something like that. I mean, they had ones that were huge, you know. There was one that like grinded up like 30 or Well, that was a meat grinder. The sausage stuffers though were like huge. So, you, so for me, I don't make sausage just like constantly. So um, the small one is good for me. So this one holds six pounds of meat. We got four pounds over there, we're good to go. I put the smallest stuffing tube, that's what this is called, it's called a stuffing tube. Uh, this just unscrews and you put the stuffing tube on it. I'll just go ahead and show you those that may not know uh, how a sausage stuffer works. You just have these little tubes it comes with. This one's the smallest one. Should work just fine with that 17 millimeter uh, collagen tubing. So we'll screw that on there. So we'll load it, the meat into this and I'll show you how this thing works uh, once we get everything seasoned up. So what we're gonna do to start with is we're gonna get our meat and we're gonna season it all up. This shouldn't take very long. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab our seasoning and we're just gonna kinda throw that seasoning on there and roll it around, you know. Roll that seasoning on there and just kinda mix it, mix it in with the, the ground meat, okay? A little more, all that seasoning in there. there we go, and we're just gonna mix it in. So let's go ahead and we're gonna fill uh, our little sausage stuffer here. So just gonna take the meat, we're just gonna put it in there. Basically, it. Nope, get a hold of it here. 
get it all in there. I'll tell you that seasoning smells really good. Not anymore. Now we'll go ahead and load this in to this uh, squisher. And this is where I'll kind of explain how this thing's gonna work. Let me grab a rag real quick. Make sure I'm one for cleaning up my messes. So I'll grab a rag. So now, this collagen tubing is not like uh, natural, uh, the, the natural casings. Um, you don't have to soak it in water, okay? You just have to, <coughs> excuse me, unravel it. So let's see, <clears throat> before we get that prepared, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna crank this down, okay? And what this does is this machine, it smushes the meat and forces it out the tube. I do have a grinder that can work as a meat stuffer. I tried that, they, ju they just don't work. They, they really don't. They end up just like mincing the meat. They end up, the meat gets stuck and it just whirls it around and turns it into mush. And so I just, I don't like them. This is really the way to go. Some of these can get kind of pricey, I know, but it is really the way to go if you wanna make some good consistent sausages that don't have like air pockets in them and, and have problems. This is the way to go. It has a little valve that's up here on the top that as you press it down, if there's any air in here, because you know I was just throwing the meat in, it will let that air release as it's going down so that you can avoid the air pockets. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get this down on here. And what I'm gonna do is, this is the nice thing about this being clear back here, I'm gonna watch when the meat starts to come into this little cavity right here, I'm gonna stop, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start pushing it down until we start meeting some resistance here and we start getting some meat coming forward. There it is. Okay, so now we're gonna get our collagen ready. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull a bunch of this off um, and we're just gonna unravel it and get it to fit onto this tube, okay? This is how we do this, just get it on there, back as far as we can get it. That's more or less how you do that. All right, and then I usually give myself a little bit, okay? Because then we're gonna tie a knot in the end of it, okay? So you're just gonna take this, I usually kinda twist it up a little bit, and you're just gonna tie a knot in the end of it, okay? Don't worry about wasting it. You got plenty here, trust me, it'll be fine. So we just tied a knot in the end of that, okay? And that keeps, obviously, it from shooting out. Now, the way that you go to stuff this, speed, you don't have to do speed. You're gonna kinda hold on to it with one hand and then crank it with the other. So I'm just gonna hold it like this and you can kinda feel it fill up with the meat, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do this. Yeah, you might wanna come in here so you can watch it. So we're gonna let this fill up with the meat and let it come off of that horn, okay? So here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna let that fill up, as you can see it. And it just, it just goes. Just like that. <laughs> We're about to go off the table here. <laughs> Scoot some stuff out of the way. That's all you gotta do. And you kinda will get the feel for it eventually. Like it's, it's kinda hard at first, but you eventually, eventually get, and then you just take the pressure off of it when you get down here towards the end. Go like this, we'll just take the pressure off. And there we go. And then I'll just cut the end of that off. Uh, give me a set here, let me get a, get a cutting board real fast, give me one second. Okay, cutting board here. And we'll just cut the end off, there we go. All right, there's one.
And so there we have it. There is a whole bunch of our little Smokies links that we got out of that four pounds of meat. Four pounds of meat goes quite a ways. So um, I know that we'll be munching on these for a very long time. Um, so now what we need to do is we're gonna need to smoke them. So now I'm gonna be using my Masterbuilt smoker is what I'll be using. Now, the Masterbuilt smoker is only this wide, okay? Obviously, that's not gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we'll probably take these guys and just kinda, you know, make it fit in a sense. We may kinda coil them up, I think. Of course, I like having them long, so I may just do them like this. Coil them up and set them about like that. Not gonna hurt anything. I may even take some, maybe some butcher's twine and wrap it up so that way they'll, they'll stay on here and I'll make a few racks of these, maybe two per rack, so that way it'll fit in my smoker. What we'll do is we've got the smoker outside, we're setting it up at about 190, 195 degrees. You could stair step it, like do 165 for two hours, then 190, two hours, then 200 some two hours. Um, I, I don't have that kind of time. I don't have uh, all day to smoke these. So um, I'm probably gonna put them in at 190, maybe 200. Uh, basically, you wanna cook them till the internal temperature is about 165 degrees. Somewhere around in there would be perfect and then you can take them off. So the best thing to do is just take a meat probe and just shove a, shove a meat probe into just one of these links somewhere. Find you know a big round spot and poke a meat probe in, probably, possibly the end that's open. And then when that reads 165, you take them off, okay? And I'll show you what to do after we take them off, but now I'm gonna prep them and get them on the smoker. Okay guys, so we got our little Smokies out of there. They are quite warm, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cool them off by hitting them with a little cold water. So we just kinda cool them down with some cold water, and that'll help kinda set the collagen casings here and then we'll end up cutting them up okay so I got uh, I got these set up here so what I do is just uh, kind of unravel them here um, I'm just gonna kind of cut them into at least just kind of cut these little pieces off and then what we'll do is I usually take these and cut them into little pieces that are probably about oh about as wide as your hand so that's generally what I do so about, about as wide as my hand, something like that. So, you know, probably little sticks, about like so. That one we can take out. Use one as kind of a gauge. Mm -hmm. These about like that. And then these will just be some kind of some leftovers. Okay, so there is our pile. And I've got some royal taste testers here. I've got my daughter and one of her friends yeah. that are gonna give this a shot. So you could, you guys can have one, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'll take one too. See if they're, are they good, bad, halfway in between? Do they dance? Well, are they, are they good enough for the dance? So that looks like they're good enough for the dance. They're in the middle, I think. So, yeah, no, not bad. Kind of tangy. Could have used the cheese though, because they're a little dry. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's kind of dry. Yeah, I just, I didn't have any, uh, I didn't have any of the cheese left that I used to do. I used to get some high temp cheese and put it in there. Probably would make it a little better because they're a little dry. But uh, I don't know, they taste pretty good, don't they? I think the taste is good. It's just they're a little dry, but. I rate them 20 out of 10. Well, that's good. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming along on this uh, episode. If you guys. Uh, Make sure you like, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Um, uh, yeah. Come back for more cooking recipes. We're going to have the beef jerky recipe coming up after this one. So we'll make some uh, deer jerky with that. Yeah. So we'll make some of that. We've got canning coming up. We've got other hunting uh, things going out, tracking, all those different things coming up. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you on the next show. Bye. Bye. Subscribe.